So um, let's switch gears a moment okay. to um, Vixen. <laughs> it's ah, a Vixen. Yeah. yeah. Um, the your first issue <laughs> for featuring uh, featuring one of the best characters in DC Comics history, as far as I'm concerned, um, dropped last uh, last week. Man, this time is running yeah, together, baby. and I I got I got a chance to to check it out to read it and. You know, when, when we see her at the photo shoot, um, I was like, yeah, this is Mr. Thorne. <laughs> this is Mr. <laughs> Thorne. Um, you know, I was just like to, throwing in the, you know, the, the social, a little bit of social commentary, but it was just her being real. You know, it was just like, yeah, it was, you can imagine any, any model, you know, any model black model in you know in a in a situation like that who is aware right. you know of that and right. and, and the, the the other part that I loved is that she had the power and the agency to say no we're not going this route <laughs> we're not this yeah. is not this is not what we're right. doing but I that had your stamp on it and then after that it was just like comic book heroics like when she first of all the design of her let's shout out to Chris Cross um with Cross. the design yeah, Cross. For, with the, the costume design and also her hair i i i loved it like the shortcut it was just it was just beautiful and it's that moment mm -hmm. where she's just standing there it's like no let's just go to work so i um if you're if you're anybody who's watching this go to comiXology and download uh truth and justice uh vixen number one yeah number one yeah. as as soon as you can and it's only 99 cents like yeah it's only please, 99 cents please. that's and that's i mean you, well that and also then go i mean also pick up you know future state green lantern and any other future state books um from your local lcs or local comic book stores uh please. shout out to yeah. our lcs's and and all that good stuff. But if you use Comixology, just buy it either way. Buy both of them. But um, yeah, let's dig please. into let's let's dig into Vixen a little bit. Like, what's you okay. know, what's your love for her? Like, what's you know, uh, Vixen's great. Yeah, um, okay. I've 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 had a soft love for Vixen okay. in that I love the idea of her. Everybody who's who's been able to write her, I don't think anyone's ever done a bad job with her. Right. right. All the little mini series are fun. They work on their own. Um, I loved her in Suicide Squad back in the day. I mm -hmm. thought that was an interesting spin on the character. I loved her in Justice League Detroit. Mm -hmm. um, shout out to Chuck Patton. Right? Chuck Patton. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, but I always, it's the same sort of thing with John. They're always thrown in to be flavors. Yeah. And so one day, and you follow my Twitter feed so you know I do this, and it's not just for Vixen or just mm -hmm. black characters. Periodically, I'll just go, whoa, this idea just popped in my head. I got this. Mm -hmm cool fix for character X, right? To make them like, mm -hmm. oh, this is what they should be, yep. right? If you all really knew what that power set is, you'd be tripping right now, yeah. right? But I never say what it is because I don't like giving away ideas for free, mm -hmm. right? So just say I had the idea. This, usually people ignore me because I'm a goofball. They don't <laughs> care, right? Mm -hmm. But occasionally someone will take me seriously. Mm -hmm. This time I said this about Vixen and Chris Cross who follows my Twitter feed was like, wait, what? And I was like, Chris, um, what are you, what? Yeah, you know I do this, what's wrong with you, right? And he's like, are you serious? You, you got an idea for making Vixen like stellar? And I was like, well, I feel like she's already stellar, but yes, right? <laughs> and he's like, all right, cool. And I'm like, cool what? He's like, I, I'm gonna talk to my editor. I'm like, but you, you don't even know what the idea is, man. What are you talking, he's like, bet, I'm going to do it, right? And I was like, what are you doing, you know? And I don't know Chris. It's not like we've been hanging out and going to barbecues or something. We know each other off Twitter, basically, right? So I was like, what is this man up to? I figured it would go away. Nothing would happen, yeah. right? Because I'm already deep in this Green Lantern stuff. I don't, I don't need any more, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to get a job, yeah. right? I get an email from his editor uh, the next morning. So Cross tells us, you have this pitch for uh, Vixen. And I was like, I don't have a pitch for Vixen. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> right? He's like, wait, what? And uh, I was like, well, I have an idea about these certain things about Vixen, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't call that a pitch. He's like, well, let's hear that. And I said, all right, well, if you read all the Vixen stories and these things that have been established in these miniseries, why is this other thing not true? Mm -hmm. And he's like, no reason. You want to write a story about it? And I was like, uh, yeah. Like, um, and he's like, do you have a story? I said, like, I don't, but I will by Tuesday. And this was like a Friday. Mm -hmm. So he's like, all right, here's back Tuesday. So I did, and they're like, yeah, we're doing this. You, want, you got 30 pages, go. 
There was no uh, Truth or Justice yet. I don't think it had a name yet. Yeah. I didn't know it was obviously I didn't know it was going to be digital or any of that. Mm-hmm. I was just going to go write this one shot. I thought we were going to get a Vixen one shot. Okay. Basically, and uh, I told Chris, look, I'm going to be doing these kind of things with it, but um, I want you to flex on the design stuff. So I'm going to basically write in the scripts very loose descriptions of what this is, mm-hmm. and then you just do your magic because I'm waiting to see what you do. I'm not going to tell you how they should look. I'm just going to yeah. say what it is, mm-hmm. and then you do it, right? So you saw already the beginnings of yeah. that. It's only going to get bigger going forward. But the idea basically was what you, what you, what you pulled out in the first issue one of the fun things I like about how the Justice League cartoon portrayed her, mm-hmm. this is a person who's happy to have superpowers, which a lot of the time people forget. Sometimes it's just fun being able to fly. Yep. Like, wouldn't you just fly sometimes? Mm-hmm. You wouldn't just, like, walk except when there was a mission, right? <laughs> You'd be like, oh, damn, I need to get across town. I'm not waiting on this Uber. Zip! Yep. You know? <laughs> or I can get a really good suntan if I get up above a certain altitude. Mm-hmm. Nobody's going to bother me. I'll just float up there for a while. Like, <laughs> just stupid stuff like that. As a person who's happy to have her powers, yep. basically. Uh, I also took the idea that everybody knows she's Vixen. Mm-hmm. Right, and I was like, "Well, how can you be a model and be Vixen? You'd have to have, based on my knowledge of Hollywood, you'd have to have some really complex contracts." That's I. And let me jump in on that when she was like, "My claws states." You know, it's yeah. like, man, yeah, I could basically break out yeah. and go save the day whenever exactly. I need to. Yeah, <laughs> that was right? awesome. And like, I know people so, are like, "Why don't you talk about when she kicked butt?" I'm like, "It's the little things about a script that shine, and fun. it adds more." It just adds more to the story. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that was another yeah, thing that so, I loved. But the other thing is, part of the reason characters are put on the B team, it doesn't have anything to do with their ethnicity or whatever. Part, one part is that the company wants you to focus on the big guys, mm-hmm. right? Because they make them the most money. But I have no interest in Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman as a writer. I just don't care. I'm never going to write a story about any of those characters because there's nothing there for me to write. I just, like, all right, go do your thing, y'all. Give me Nightwing and we can talk. Yes. But I got nothing to do with Batman. I don't know. No love, no, no dislike for Batman. No love for Batman. I just don't care. Yeah. Right. But with a lot of these secondary characters, they're just sort of around for flavor for years. Mm-hmm. And nobody really does much with them. So for me, I'm like, yeah, have you really thought about what you've said Vixen can do? And it doesn't seem to me editorially. I don't know that the writers didn't suggest these things, because how can I know that? Mm-hmm. But editorially, people have not thought through what they've already established that this woman can do. So I was like, here's what she can do. Why can't? Why has she not done these things? That was one question. Yeah. The real reason is nobody thought to have her do them, but maybe there's an inside the story reason for why she hasn't done these things, mm-hmm. right? That's one, so we can address it. Two, let's give her a different set of missions than well, the Justice League called me and I'll show up. You know, uh, we couldn't get we couldn't get super strong Wonder Woman because her big, big book is doing something and we couldn't have her. Uh, let's grab Vixen. You know, no. Um, the other thing is, um, based on her power set, she's in the same weight class as Superman and Wonder Woman in terms of power. Mm-hmm. People, don't, people, some people be like, what? And I'm like, yeah, because you didn't look and see what she can actually do. What they said was. She has the power to access the abilities, however much of that ability she wants, from any animal that is currently alive or has ever existed on the planet Earth. Um, anyone nice. with a basic understanding nice. of, uh, of our planet's bi- biosphere mm-hmm. would be like, why is she just choosing African animals all the time? Thank you. Right? <laughs> Thank you. Like, why is she even choosing animals that only, like, why wouldn't she choose a dire wolf? Yeah. Why wouldn't she choose a Tyrannosaurus Rex? Mm-hmm. Right? And I've seen other writers have given her all these extra powers like she can choose fantasy characters like mm-hmm. she could be a dragon any character yeah. anything that could be an animal like you don't need to give her all that she doesn't need all that she already had enough juice because the other thing she can do that animal man can't do she can have both the elephant's strength and the eagle's flight at the same time <laughs> and she, if she just needed a lot of strength she could stack up all the elephants plus a uh, couple of woolly mammoths plus a yeah. uh, plus a, a, a blue whale, the strength mm-hmm. of a blue whale, and even better, the proportional strength of a dung beetle, right? Ants and things like that, they yeah. lift, what, like 150 times yep. their body weight? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so if you expand that up to human size, that's mm-hmm. a person who can lift up a skyscraper. Yes. 
<laughs> right? So if she punches Superman, she might not win that fight, but mm-hmm. he's going to know he was in a fight. Exactly. It's not going to be like, that's a that's bring a lunch. Yep. Right? And Vixen is, you better bring a lunch. <laughs> and that's Superman. Yeah. That's Wonder Woman. Anybody else, if she wants to go, you're in trouble. Yep. Right? Now, what I've tried to say is that even she did not know all she could do. So by the time we meet her in this story, and there'll be more, you see next week in the middle of um, mm-hmm. the chapter, is mm-hmm. a minor explanation. She has given her powers some thought. Okay. And so the animals that you're going to see her choose under my writing, when I'm mm-hmm. writing her, you're going to be like, I didn't even know such, something like that. Did he make that up? You know <laughs> what I mean? Right. right? Yeah. I'm like, no, I will never make up a fake animal for her to choose. But like you even saw in the... In the current story, she takes mm-hmm. people are always giving her bird powers. Yeah. And I'm like, not for speed, they better not, because <laughs> one of the fastest animals on this earth is a house fly. Yep. <laughs> That's right? And if yeah. you speed up its if you lift up its power to human size, mm-hmm. she's flying like a freaking supersonic jet whenever she wants. Wow. Right? So let her do that. And let her have fun and be flirty and be the kind yeah. of black woman that I grew up knowing. Yeah. Right? There's and and that's and that's one of the you know one of the things that I, I like is that you, you you're able to kind of do this balance of just a regular person and the over the top super, super heroics which is right. which which hits hard <laughs> which hits hard so um, that's you know I'm, I'm very excited for what you, you know what you have coming down the line for her uh, is there and this is going to kind of tie into another question okay is there a chance that you would in addition to any other heroes or heroines or or whatnot, is there a chance that you would want to pitch more for her, you know, in the future? Yeah, like, me and Chris okay. have already told our editor, and this is why part of the reason I want to do these interviews is I want people yeah. to buy these things. Like normally, I don't I want to, I don't want to say this the wrong way. Mm-hmm. Comic books don't pay you very much money, mm-hmm. right? I'm a TV writer, right. so I don't make my money off of comics. I do comics because I love comic books. Yeah. So in a weird way, like people were mad when Mosaic didn't do his. I yeah. mean, obviously, I wanted Mosaic to keep going for Marvel, yeah. and it didn't. It went away, and it, it certainly, I was like, oh, man, that sucks. But it wasn't my living. Yeah. It wasn't like my whole life did not depend on that. Mm-hmm. So when it went away, I was like, okay, I guess that was a miss. Yeah. Let's move on to the next, right? But if all I did was make comics, that would have broken my heart, Yeah. right? So in this case, the reason I'm pumping these stories mm-hmm. is because I want them to last in this case, we have one shot with Vixen. So we took time. Chris and I talked about the things I wanted to try, things he wants to try drawing, right? Like whenever you get the artist engaged right away like that, yep. you want to lean back and let them flex. You don't yep. want to say, no, no, no. You want to be <laughs> like, yo, do your thing, man. If it gets too big, we'll, we'll pull you back in, Yeah. right? Because you want that enthusiasm. So mm-hmm. with Vixen, once I really started writing this 30 pages, we're introducing a lot of conceptual stuff. Just the stuff with the Global Guardians. That's mm-hmm. all us. Yeah. Right? That's not how they've been established in the regular in the regular line. We nice. did a different wrinkle on what their mission statement is. Right. Right? Um, the new the Impala, he's mm-hmm. completely new. We just said we just took the name Impala. That's mm-hmm. a brand new character. His powers you've never seen his powers before. Yeah. Right? The only power we're showing you right now is he's sort of in the Flash category, but right. not really. He even says so in the book. I'm not that f- fast. Exactly. I'm fast, <laughs> but it took him an hour to get from the middle of Africa to Cape Town. Mm. That's how fast he is because he was running all out. That's yeah. how fast he is. Right? But he can do other stuff that we're not even going to show yeah. in this story. Plus, Dr. Mist. He's been floating mm-hmm. around D.C. People use him, whatever. It's basically when we can't get Dr. Fade or Zatanna or somebody, or Z- mm-hmm. Zatara, whatever. Like, oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Dr. Mist, right? Or John Constantine. <laughs> Dr. Mist. Let's grab yeah. Dr. Mist. You know what I mean? And I'm like, but you've established that he does all this stuff. Yeah. And he supposedly runs the Global Guardians. Let's have him. But let's, let's, let's jack him up and really show what he's about. Yeah. So, again, in issue two, you're going to be like, oh, it's like that. <laughs> Seriously, on the first yeah. few pages of the second chapter, which come out this week, yeah, you're going to be like, oh, they're playing like this. That's what's up. Like, so for real. And you're going to be like, yeah, that's what's up. But none of it's just Jeff coming in going, yeah, I like Vixen. Really I'm like... going to make her, I'm going to make her so big. All this is already built into these characters. It's just nobody takes the time to really look at them. Because right. why would you? Right. right. 
So, yes, please buy the hell out of these books because Chris and I want to do an ongoing with Vixen and the Global Guardians. We are down for that. We've multiple times, not just me and Chris, the entire team is like, we are down for this book. Nice. So, which all of us kind of came in, ah, this will be fun. Mm -hmm. But now that we're doing it, we're like, oh, this is fun. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not just me. Like, I'm, they're reading the script going, Jeff, what's wrong with you? And I'm getting the art back like, God damn. Yep. Like, you know, anything, when the when the art comes back, when the lettered art, every, mm -hmm. I'm talking the letterers, the editor, the colorist, yep. everybody on this team is like, yeah, I'm, I'm here for the run. If we get a run out of this, I'm going to stay. This right? Because it's just so much fun to write Marion, to have a light superhero yep. mm -hmm. that is fighting I can write the kind of wisecracks that a person would really say. Mm -hmm. uh, a woman that's just like, well, you saw in the first issue, homeboy mm -hmm. tries to grab her and she's like, boy, you better get a grip. <laughs> We're not Love doing it. that. We're not doing yeah. that. <laughs> it's not it. this kind of, that's not the kind of party you're at. Yeah. <laughs> right? And she's flirty with men she likes, yep. but not in a cheesy crap way. Mm -hmm. Right. And the guy is a little flustered by what is he even, oh, damn, she's flirting with me. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah. also, Impala is is black. Yeah. Right. But the implication is that he's black and he's representing some African country. But actually he's the British representative. Okay. He's Brit. Right. He just happens to have an African motif because of his background. But mm -hmm. he's actually in the UN task force representing England. Mm -hmm. Right. Which when I bring in a white South African to represent South Africa, people are gonna lose their minds, right? Yeah. Why can't I'm American? Look at my face. Can yeah. I not represent my country? Yeah. There's a whole slew of white Africans born and raised in South Africa mm -hmm. that can represent that country if you want them to. I'm not saying I would do that. Yeah. I'm saying that's the kind of shake up to the Global Guardians I'm going to, I would want to do. Right? right. So the person representing the country you think, mm -hmm. right? Like maybe the United States is represented not by Vixen. Maybe she's not the American representative, mm -hmm. but a Native American is the yeah. representative or a Latin American or Asian American is the representative of America for this round. Right. Right. So that kind of fun you can have with it. Also, the mission statement that we gave them in the in the, the story is mm -hmm. we run down the problems. We get them. We put the fire out before it gets big enough to have to call the Justice League. Right. Yeah. That means the Justice League handles world shaking events. We don't let there's so much crap going on on this planet. If the Justice League comes in, that's that's like planetary. Yeah. Right. That's like something that threatens the whole planet. Why are we letting stuff get that big? Like, Cut it off at the hip. Right. And the UN doesn't want to always be calling the damn Justice League. <laughs> right. right. They might be busy yeah. on some other planet anyway. Or like an, <laughs> or another know. dimension or whatever. Another, yeah, but maybe yeah. they're trapped in another. <laughs> who's going to handle this stuff? You right. Never know. And I I also didn't know because DC like Marvel got all of the um, cross gen and mm -hmm. Malibu comics and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh, and um, what, uh, and Star Wars. And they mm -hmm. got Fox, so now they got Alien and yeah. all that other stuff. But DC has Wildstorm, Milestone, mm -hmm. uh, a couple of other those kind of things. So yeah. they have Stormwatch, which is a, a yeah. Wildstorm yeah. Uh, a property, but it's mm -hmm. part of the DCU now. But they're also a UN team. Mm -hmm. So I had to come up with something for the Global Guardians to do that wasn't what what, that, what Stormwatch does. Okay. Right? They had to do different things. So uh, so that's fun. And I wanted, like, if we can get a book called Vixen and the Global Guardians, that would, yeah. I would be a happy man. <laughs> that would be awesome. Be awesome. Make and me I, happy, y'all. Go buy that book. Yeah, we're, we're going to be pushing it. <laughs>